What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Nathan and on this planet we send it and what we're going to be getting today well we're going to be getting into a garden vlog because although I've been busy working on my kitchen backsplash the garden has been busy just growing over because of this we're now in springtime and there is a lot of change just in the last seven to ten days since the last vlog. So we're going to go ahead and do is I'm just taking a break from uh, my other project to kind of show you loyal viewers who actually are watching my garden videos um, to show you what's going on in here. All right, I got a plan in place. Let's go ahead and send it. All right, like I said, I'm putting up the backsplash, so please forgive the work in progress back there. But let's take a look at the two blueberry bushes. I kind of always skip over this, but let's talk about them by names. All right, so this is the Jubilee blueberry bush. And this one's doing good. It's, you know, not as doing good as the other one, but it is doing good. And this one over here is the Southern High Bush blueberry and this one is definitely doing the best like i mentioned when i first planted them there it's good to have two different variety so that's what i have here so once they start going to flowers and now that i got the bees here you know we're gonna hopefully get a nice very good first harvest once the flowers come in i'm just not sure if we're gonna get flowers on the first year we'll see all right, let's take a look at the hungry bin and the strawberries over here real fast. I just want to mention, you'll note that I put down a good layer of uh, probably two to three inches of cardboard because we had some rain and it seems like it all just compressed. It was like down six inches from the top. So I put another about, like I said, two to three inches up there to kind of dry things out for the worms and the worms really like cardboard. So that's another reason too. But the strawberries, doing really good. We've got still, still got them coming in. We've been had, having temperatures like as high as a hundred here according to my home weather station but uh we just last night we got into 45s but oh man check out these strawberries is this one even ready not quite Ooh, but this one is look at how dark that is mm. i'm sorry i'm gonna eat this real fast let's see if we can uh film and eat at the same time hmm Mmm. Mmm. Sorry, I got a little sideways on you. Delicious. Man, those are tasting good. Um, looks like I actually, we missed a couple here. Let me show you. These are a little too dark. Um, but let's see here. Take these. Yeah, this one definitely. So what we're going to do is we're just going to recycle that one. This one's still firm enough for me to go ahead and eat. So let's go ahead and do that. And then of course, as I flipped the camera around, I accidentally turned it off. So let's go ahead and move on over here to the other section. Got some greens coming up. Uh, I'm unsure what these look like. They kind of look like Swiss chard, but the, how they're flowering at the top, it looks a little different. So to be honest, I'm sure, unsure. But we got plenty of broccoli back there. Now let's go ahead and uh, hop over and see how the bees are doing. Oh my goodness, they've almost filled up that entire thing. They're actually doing better than I thought they were going to do. Uh, but uh, here, that's just it's probably too much. And I know that my camera doesn't do that great when it's in zoomed into 4.0, but they've almost filled up that entire cavity. I think the last time we were here, they are just at about at half, and it looks like they're about three quarters of that cavity, so that's pretty crazy. And I will say, and just as I mentioned, the last time they are starting to get in the yard, we are seeing them very much in the yard, and they are not showing any sort of aggression. So, you know what? I might just be capturing this hive and putting it in the, you know, a permanent home here. We'll, we'll have to see. It's almost like taking a walk down memory lane. We got the hops just going crazy this year. I definitely need to make sure that I don't let these things go to waste this year and give me like some freeze dry thing. And so they're, you know, they're doing really good. I actually just had to tidy them up because they're starting to grow back into my neighbor's yard. Um, but uh, these are doing good too. Again, I forget what they are. I think these are uh, peas, um, but uh, they might be coming to the end of production. I don't know. It seems like they're still growing, but we'll have to see. Tomatoes coming in down here. Still haven't done my maintenance like I wanted to, which includes removing that papaya bush and trying to strategically kill off the mint. But let's take a look at the tomatoes here. Tomatoes are flowering. Looks like they might start to be opening, but not quite yet for the bees to come here and uh, pollinate them. But I'm just waiting for them to start opening up because they should be pollinated pretty fast as soon as they do open up. Looks like some of them, uh, no, that's about the same. Some of them are kind of getting there, um, but just not quite yet. So it's, we should be seeing them flowers opening up pretty soon. 
And let's see here, and just about everything else is the same, just growing really well as far as the peas, and let's see any other surprises down here. The lettuce, correction, the the spinach down here is doing pretty good. I mean, it's actually, not, it's not doing anything really. It's just, it's not dying. It's not being ate up. So that's really great. But, uh, you know, I wish it could be starting to grow and show a little bit more. Maybe as the temperatures get consistently more warm, we'll see. Man, but check this thing out. I forget whichever like bean this was, but this thing is doing really good with all the flowering. Um, and so we should, I'm, I'm very curious to see what this is going to be and how the harvest is going to be this year, I should say. And there's a couple of reasons why we need to start off back here, especially when talking about the uh, dual grafted tree. Take a look at the plum side. That thing is just towering right now in beast mode. And look at all the flowers up there. Here, let's go ahead and walk in up there so you can, si you can see them. You can kind of see the white flowers. I'm assuming you should be able to see the contrast with that on the blue. Uh, it's a little hard for me to see in my uh, camera f right now, but you guys are probably seeing it. But that's just going crazy. And then also the the peach tree, the, the peach side is, is starting to come out and do pretty good. We'll just jump over here, right? It seemed like a few days after I did my last video just about all the pink cherry blossoms correction peach blossoms had fallen and we're now just basically into production let's see if we can see it yep and we can even kind of see some of these are already starting to kind of transition there so the, the, the peaches are starting to come in now let's go ahead and hop in over here to check out the semi-dwarf trees this one's not looking so semi-dwarf at the moment um, but this uh, which, um, whichever orange this is this is looking to do pretty good and this one is even starting to kind of take off too we got some good sprouting coming up so uh, you know I wish it would start to fill in a little bit more like that one but at least it's not showing signs of dying as I'm setting up for the persimmons I'm seeing some suckers I'm actually seeing some suckers all around the garden I'm gonna definitely have to come and take care of definitely trying to remain sucker free in the garden so I think that's all on the persimmons but the persimmons is persimmons is actually starting to fill up with leaves so i'm not seeing any flowering quite yet but that's that's a good sign that this thing is off and i do like how it's kind of narrowly growing up and and it seems to be able to support its own weight so that's pretty good and that's kind of key because we're going to talk about that here in a second but we'll just quickly jump over here to the mexican lime tree not really seeing any major growth we had that uh, all those flowering come in and they they've occurred let's just kind of dip in and see if we're starting to see any uh convert already to oh yeah we are starting to see, I don't know how well you can see these right there, but we are starting to, the flowers are already starting to convert into limes, so that'll be great. All right, the two fig trees. We almost got to, might have to change my angle there based on how this is and how this is growing, I should say, but uh, it's doing really well. It just had like a little spurt up there to the side and is kind of growing off in that direction. And you can kind of see that the, the tree itself is starting to fill up with flowers. But let's take a look at some of these early figs coming in. Let's see, that one's in the shade. Let's see if we can come over here to the ones that are not. But uh, you can see already right there, those early figs over there are starting to, you know, fill out. And these up here, so all the early figs, shoot, those will probably be ready to harvest here um, in just a couple of weeks, to be honest. I would say no more than four, but we'll have to, we'll have to see how it's going. And uh, this one down here, it's just it's showing more growth coming in. You know, it's, it's filling out a little bit, and we got the next, you know, the, the trunk is sort of continuing. So that's a great sign. All right, now this is what I was talking about when we're saying being able to hold its own weight. In addition to the 100 plus temperatures we've been getting, was those were caused by the Santa Anas, basically the winds out here that go from the east to the west. So I had to go ahead and stilt up, uh, put another stilt on the avocado tree here because the whole thing was like limping over because that other one was basically pulled out and pulled loose. But let's go ahead and just take a look at how these things are sprouting. I mean, these things are just, it's just like a star. It's, just, it's shining to me right now. And I'm just, I can't wait. 
like I said, it's kind of hard to believe you're going to go from all these styles of, you know, you know, all this flowering happen literally just all over the whole tree. And I think this is going to be the first year. So normally you only get five or less. Um, but it's, it's just kind of funny how much flowering is required just to get a few fruit. Now I know it's the only its first year and it gets better after more and more each year till it's basically in full production. But still it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that how much flowering occurs and then only four or five, maybe three or less avocado. And big Bertha, like I, I need to finish my project on the backsplash so I can come out and do the maintenance and do my pruning because let's see if we can get one here. There's already like new gr growth coming in all over the tree. I can already see the new leaves coming in and they're coming in pretty dense. So I want to make sure all the new growth that's coming in is going to go to the section that I keep because like I mentioned I'm going to be doing a pretty big hack and I, I really need to get that done but let's go ahead and hop over here to the pomegranate real fast uh looks like there's actually more suckers than I can let me see here I see some in the ground there let's see if I can take some of these off with oh yeah these are coming right off okay yep remain a sucker free in the garden so you guys are all coming down you're the one that I... oh you're coming off easy too all right, even the pomegranate now is sucker free. But yeah, the oh, missed one. Okay, now it's now it's good. All right, but look at all the you can kind of see the red flowers. Some of them are opening up pretty well, like back here, and so it's just giving the bees opportunity. The bees came to the right place. I hope I hope they saw all the abundance that's coming here soon. Why they chose to make it a home? Because I might end up, like I said, choosing them to stay home. All right, I'm just going to real quickly highlight, I'm probably going to take this Ashwagandha bush down because I got another one growing uh, just behind me that I'll hot point out as soon as we get over there to the little engine I could. But let's ju jump in here and talk to, talk to, <laughs> let's go ahead, I guess we're talking to it. Let's see how this baby avocado is. I see some, you know, buds there, see some there. And so I'm hoping that some of those are basically part of the new branch, the trunk, I should say, that's going to be coming up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still a little concerned and a little nervous about what I'm seeing here on the plant. And I, I don't want to necessarily pull these leaves off quite yet because I don't want to do damage to them. But, uh, so I'm going to kind of let them just fall off on their own. But I am waiting to see another sort of trunk extension come so that I see more leaves starting to come out. All right, so we got some suckers coming in, but uh, we got some intentional suckers coming in. So which one to keep and which one to remove is the question. So we're going to keep everyone up at the top. So I usually try to have, so and we're going to keep these two. Usually if they're little, like here at the base base, I got, I'm going to go ahead and remove these. Because this thing is acting as its base. So I'm not going to let any come in on the base, and some of those are so far within the bark. I can't quite pull those out quite yet, but... This, these are okay. I'm okay with it sort of sprouting out. I just hope that they r stay strong enough to hold the elderberries when they come in. Hola, chicas. How are you doing? Yep, I know you guys want out. You, how's, how's the egg production coming? Have we harvested yet this morning? Uh, haven't harvested. Got two in there. All right, that's cool. My concerns still remain for the mango tree, correction, the papaya tree, but I'm starting to see some goodness. So you can see, if you kind of just take a look back, just a few weeks ago, we had a nice canopy here, and that's completely, literally just falling off. And even these right here are starting to die. And I got one here that's dead, and one here that's looked like it's dead. The inner ones so far are not showing any signs that, you know, they're, they're sort of crumbling either. But uh, I really want to start seeing a little bit better growth and, you know, healthier appearance. Um, because uh, should I, what I may even have to do, because I'm not even seeing much flowering happening up there. So what that tells me, it's unable to support flowering. So what I may end up having to do is just come out, maybe take this one off and take this one off and just kind of keep reducing the papayas even though they may not be fully ready just because the tree itself isn't quite ready to be taking on these fruit anymore now that it lost that canopy all right let's take a look at the navel orange tree as typical normally all of the flowering really does turn to fruit uh, at least a really good majority of it i kind of look down to the bottom is that some suckers coming in sure is adios suckers 
So I take a look at the bottom to see if any things have dropped so far. For example, like that one back there is a dropped orange. Only one of them so far, but all the others are holding on. So it's still a very young tree. I'm thinking we're going to be at five or less, but at least it is starting to produce fruit. And I'm going to go ahead and let it produce fruit, even though it is the size that it is. Now the little engine that could. All right, let's take a look here. Um, this all, at least at the very high part, tends to be the same. But these fl these are flowering coming in. That's definitely a lot of new stuff. We thought we, you know, we identified that the last vlog, but this is starting to turn out to be what is going to be mango flowers. So this is probably where they're going to be coming in at. And I'm a little concerned mango's going to try to hold on on that branch right there. We'll see. But uh, I am going to let it go to fruit in this year, and, and, and we'll just have to, you know, if it, if it looks like the fruit is starting to devastate the plant or the tree itself, then I'll just pull the fruit until it's able to support it better. And I'm just highlighting, this is over here where my watering hose and the roses are over here. You can see some of them blooming up right there and right there. This is where the ashwagandha bush is, and I'm, and I'm probably going to keep this one here and take down the other one. Now, in addition to some of the wind that was affecting the avocado tree, this part of the vine right here actually was blown completely off. And I'll put a clip in here. Even right now, it's kind of wanting to fall this way. So I want to make sure that it's, number one, as it grows, it's growing, you know, safely and on a steady platform. But uh, I was actually kind of surprised that the entire trunk came off. So we'll go ahead and put that... Oh, and we even lost this right here, too. So that sucks. Let me see if I can kind of... Yep. All right. But as you look up there, we're getting... I'll go ahead and get you a little closer. And we'll slowly walk down here. The grapes are coming out on just about all the vines. The vine is looking healthy. Let's take a look at uh, both vines here. Let's see here. Let's separate this one a little bit. I can't really separate it. It's hanging on to something over here. Come on. There we go. And so this one's getting some growth. Let's see how far. Yeah, the, that one's just now starting to get some growth. Nothing down here. Looks like this one's being used by the main branch to support itself. So that's kind of funny. And uh, yeah, let's see how far down we're coming here. So we are almost completely down to the very tip, but just not quite yet. All right, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, a lot of, a lot of action happening here in the garden. Things are growing fast. It's something new every day just about. You know, as, I, as I've said on many videos ago, that uh, every time I come into the garden now, it is like Christmas. I'm just curious to see what I'm going to get. So very happy. You know, a couple of concerned spots around here. Extremely pleased that the bees are still here and they look like they're doing well and they're not stinging us. So that's a great thing. Plus all the flowering and the fruiting that appears to be on its way. I'm really excited for what this spring and correction and into the summer, what this harvesting season is going to look like. So that's going to be the big Christmas day. But anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you on the next one.